As always, I want to give you just a little more information here uh, that I think will be really handy for your exam and also getting you used to working with ASDM. And something that happened uh, off camera, so to speak, is really going to answer the question I know that some of you are already having or have had since the beginning of this course. Like, okay, if you're working in a GUI, like CCP, if you're working with ASDM, you know, whatever, what happens if you're working on it through the GUI and someone else sits down at the router and starts doing something to it? You know, do, do they let you know? Well, we'll see what happens with AS, ASDM when that happens in just a moment. And here I've got uh, VLANs 1, 2, and 4. I went ahead and configured those two VLANs we went we uh, almost configured in uh, the previous video. I went ahead and did that because I want you to see the firewall section and the access rules, that kind of thing. And I went ahead and gave them their IP addresses. You can see the name if command. That's the interface level command for naming an interface. We also see those security levels again. Uh, DMZ again is going to have a uh, security level of 50. That is optional as far as the DMZ goes, period. Um, and let's see, name if outside security level zero. We've got our IP addresses and we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and bring our GUI back up. And I'm on the firewall section actually. Let me bring that down a bit. And notice this interesting message I got. You know, we've got some information behind it on the screen about the DMZ and inside and outside. But this message is ASDM configuration out of sync. And the first time you see that, you go, oh man, how did I get out of sync? I didn't do anything. Well, you might not have done anything, but someone else might have. Uh, what the message actually says is changes were made to the running configuration via the CLI or by another ASDM user that are not currently visible in ASDM. It is recommended to refresh ASDM by getting the current copy of the running config from the device. Do you want to refresh now? You do have the option here of do not show this message again. I like seeing this message again uh, because if that's happening regularly while I'm working on a router in ASDM, that means that someone else is working on the router as well, and that can happen. You know, that, that can happen. You're working on it. Someone else heard about the problem. They're working on it, and maybe you're working at cross purposes. So I don't really like to check that box. You can if you want, but let's hit refresh now. And that's going to take just a few seconds, probably, because this isn't a big config. And we're already ready to go. So again, we're in the configuration section, uh, and I went to firewall from there. And you can always see your path right here, configuration, firewall. And right now we're at access rules. Let's bring the punch the diagram up. Uh, I do want you to see that the diagram, we're so used to that being there by default that it's not going to be there by default in ASDM. So you might just have to hit diagram. That's just going to give you a little graphic reminder of everything that's going on. Source address, here's your service, etc. Uh, and you can always get rid of it if you need the room by hitting the X right there. Now, let's see. Just a couple of things here to note. It's going to show you your DMZ and these are all default rules that are here. And note the one that only has one rule. And there's a reason for that. Let me use this to go, can I drag that out a little bit there? There we go. Um, source any and then destination any less secure networks. Notice the first two are about the DMZ, then it's inside, then it's outside. Always be careful about that. Make sure if you're uh, checking out your inside rules, don't look at the DMZ rules. That's not going to help. But shrinking this back down so we can see this, I like the little explanation they give us because these are all implicit rules. And notice that the DMZ and inside have implicit rules about permitting all traffic to less secure networks. And also notice the diagram changes. It's going to give you a different point of view uh, as depending on whether you're looking at the inside interface or the outside or the inside. But when you have DMZ, you'll see it become visible right there. So let's go back to that rule then. Why do we have that for the DMZ? And we have it for the inside, but we don't have it for the outside. Why do we have an implicit rule permitting all traffic to less secure networks for the DMZ and the inside, but not the outside? And I know you're saying, man, I hope the questions on the exam are this easy. <laughs> I, I know that I'm hitting you over the head with this one. I understand that. But these security values are so important. If that outside interface has a security level of zero, well, we cannot get lower than that. So there's no reason to have that rule there because there's no way to have a less secure network than zero. 
with our numbers. Just got to remember that zero through 100. And I know when you're getting your CCNA, you know, and even in your NP, when you're learning these numeric values, sometimes the higher values are better. Sometimes the lower values are better. Uh, it can drive you a bit nuts. It did me. But this is one we just got to remember. We don't have a lot of numeric values here in, in the CCNA security world. Um, I can't really think of it. I know there's another one, but I can't think of it right off the top of my head. So that is a good thing. You don't have them all clogging your head. Just got to remember 0 through 100 on the ASA, and 100 is the best. So, uh, you know, the usual suspects here, you know, you can add if you want to highlight one. You can edit your lines. You can edit your rules. Notice that you can't edit and delete and move around because you've got up and down arrows here to move your rules around. Uh, notice they're not enabled right now, and that may seem strange, but these are implicit rules. You can't get rid of these. You can't get rid of them. But if you wanted to add a rule, we'll, like, we'll wait for the rest of that to load. There we go. Add access rule, and it's really just exactly what you would expect. You know, the interface, is it going to be permit deny? You know, what's the source? What's the destination? What's the service? You can even give a remark. Hint, hint, hint. Um, you know, if you're working for me one day, you're going to have to put those remarks in. And whether you want to enable logging or not. And really, that's all there is to it. You know, if you can, if you can work with CCP, and certainly you can, uh, you can work with this tool. It just takes a little getting used to, uh, as always, but it's just not that terribly difficult. Just remain calm, and that's all there is to it. Especially, I always say that. Uh, but it's easy to get a little anxious the first time you're working with a new GUI. Perfectly natural, but you'll work through it. So that is our firewall look, and that's about it for the ASA right now. So I'll see you on the next video.